Okay, so let's get started with our Karma model. And of course, at the very beginning, we are going to grab our assembly model component into the workshop requirements. There we go. So the first thing we need to do again is to define our Karma elements. And in this case, since we are we have our lines defining grasshopper here that make up the structural system, we are going to use them to uh, as input for the line to beam component, right? So there we go. And now, since we are going to assign um, different properties to each of these uh, elements here, to each of these uh, list of lines, we are going to combine them with the end wine component. There we go. So this could be the upper chord, this would be the lower chord, the diagonals, and finally the posts, right? The vertical posts. So these are my uh, lines, and as you can see, they make up like a tree structure. So what we need to do is to connect them here, and we are going to assign identifiers to each of these lists. And for that, let's uh, use a panel and first the upper chord, but then the lower chord, finally the diagonals and the post. There we go. Okay, and now we have to select multi-line data no, and we are going to connect it here, but of course we need to graph this input, right? To make sure that each of, of these identifiers is assigned to a whole list of elements. Okay, so these are my elements. Let's connect them here with our um, Karamba model. And of course, we need to flatten this tree, right? So let's flatten it. So these are my elements. And now uh, you should know that we need to define the cross sections for these elements. And this is going to be somehow different in this case. So first, let's define our material with the material selection component once again. And we are going to go for a steel material and it's going to be, for instance, a steel 235, right? Why not? Okay, so that's our material. And now we need to define our cross-section. But later on, what we are going to do is to optimize the cross-sections of this truss structure. And for that, we will need a list of cross-sections. And we get this list with this component here, cross-section range selector. So basically, what you do here is first you connect the material. And now what you do is to uh, use these filters to uh, navigate the cross-section database of Caramba and select the list of cross-sections that you are looking for. In this case, let's select, for instance, European e Union, shape um, I profiles, and let's use, for instance, the HEB profiles. That's right. So now the output of this component could be a list of all these profiles that are in the database, which in this case are 24. And later on, we will use them to optimize each member of our cross structure. But first of all, in order to do that, we need to do a simple analysis of our truss structure, which means that we need just one section for this first analysis. And the question is, how can we get this um, section from this list? Well, first of all, we have also, we need to say that we could filter this output list by providing a maximum height or maximum width for these cross sections, but we are not going to do it because we want to use all of them. And now we want to select one of these um, cross section. So of course, what we could do is to use the, the list item component. There you are. And in this way, we would have just one cross section here, right? In this case, the first one, the HEB 100. And another option, perhaps a more um, complete one, would be to use the cross section selector component. So what this does is that you plug a list of cross sections here, and now you select basically the name of the cross section that you are looking for. In this case, for instance, we select HTB 300. Now the output would be precisely the HTB 300. And of course, <laughs> uh, it's necessary that this uh, cross section is included in this input list. Since this is the case, that's the cross section that we are going to use. And now we can uh, assign the, the identifiers here, for instance, to assign this cross section. Or for this first analysis, what we are going to do is to assign the cross section, the same cross section, to all elements, just like that. 
Okay, so that those uh, would be my elements. And now let's define our supports, right? So here uh, I have my, my two um, nodal supports and there are two points here. So I have to split them up. So let's get the, the list. Well, we could use the split list uh, component, but it's also very simple. If we get the list item component, we plug the supports here. And now let me tell you a trick. We can zoom in into this component and now these uh, commands um, appear <laughs> and now we have just we need to click on this uh, plus sign and we get the other output parameter so this would be the first support and this the other support so what we are going to do is of course to so this would be as i was saying this would be just to check it this support on the left side and this would be the other support on the other side right and now let's define the Caramba supports with the support component. So the first support, this is going to be a pin supports, but with no, um, no displacements possible. So we need to fix all the displacement. That's right. And we also need to fix the rotations around the X axis. Otherwise, um, the truss would fall down to the side, <laughs> as you can imagine. Okay, and now for the other support, and this is very important, since we want to achieve a statically determined structure, we need to release the displacement in the X direction, right? So this is uh, very similar to the simple beam that we were seeing in chapter one. So this would be my supports, and let's connect them to the um, assemble model component, and let's check it, but just in case we're going to flatten this list, right? So we have our elements, we have our supports, and we need our loads now. So let's go for it, loads component. And in this case, I prepared this definition so that this line load is broken down into a several point loads. So this would be the, the points where we are going to apply this load, and this would be the value, right? The value of equivalent point load on these points. So uh, trusses, as we say, they are more efficient when they uh, work just under axial forces. And for that, they need to have point loads, no line loads. I mean, line loads are also possible, but then our structure would be not as efficient. And this is also possible, of course, in case that we have secondary beams that are directly coming to this node. So this is not something, um, this is a very common case, actually. So again, these are my loads and I need to set this loads component as a point load component. So this could be my nodes location and this would be my load values for CR. But of course, we need to define a, a vector. So this is going to go in the C direction along the C axis and there they are going to be pointing down, downwards, right? So let's define it this way and let's go for it let's go for it and it seems like it's all right and in this case this is these are the only loads that we are going to have so there's no necessity to specify the load base okay so these are my loads and perhaps at this point it would be a very good idea to check our um, inputs with the with the model view component so that's right we can see our loads here they make sense. We can see our supports, right? We can see how here there is no the displacement in the along the longitudinal direction is not restrained. And if if you want, we can display the load values uh, like this. And of course, if we change the uh, line, the value of our line load, we can see how this values change as well. So I think everything makes sense. And we could even, of course, use the um, beam radius, sorry, the um, beam view component to check our cross section. So in this case, these are my cross sections. We can even display the cross section name. And of course, we can change it this way. So for instance, in case that we would need a, an ATB 100, it could look like this. And we can see here the 3D shape of our profile. So that that's so interesting in case that uh, you want to do just basically a, a 3d visualization of a truss structure 
you can use Karama, right? Because with Karama, and these um, profiles are automatically extruded in 3D, which is very interesting, I think. Okay, but anyway, let's leave it like HCB 100, why not? Okay, so now to finalize, we have to define our joints for this truss structure, right? Because as we said, we don't need to transmit many moments when this structure uh, deflects. And for that reason, these connections are usually defined in, in reality so that they are pin connections, right? They don't transmit many moments. And for that, we need to do it in Karamba through pinches or joints. And let's define them right now. So first of all, I've just realized that this input of the line to being uh, component, this should be IDs, right? Not colors as I did before. So just take it, please. And now let's define our joints. So for that, we are going to use the following component. Before in the previous section about frame structures, we use the beam join agent, right? Because we were assigning a hints to a particular node, but now we are going to assign hinges to the ends of my elements, right? Not to a node, but to an element. So for that, we need this other component, beam joins. Let's get it here. And now you can see that we can uh, uh, specify the hinges for both ends of my elements. And what we need to provide here is my element ID. So in this case, I'm going to start off by specifying hinges in all my elements. And for that, of course, I need to uh, free release the rotations around the Y axis like that. And now, as before, what we are going to do is this simple trick of assigning a very, slow, a very low stiffness to my hinges, right? Instead of creating a perfect hinge, we are going to use this little trick in order to avoid any uh, possible numerical error later on with the analyzed component. So let's assign this stiffness to the uh, stiffness rotation, both at the end and at the start point of my elements. So it seems like this looks nice. So let's connect this guy here to the assemble model component, right? And if we take a closer look, now we can see how we have defined our hinges in both ends of all my truss elements. Okay, that's right. And now, uh, before moving on, I just wanted to point out point out that there is this other option here. So if you click on the options um, bar on the light beam component, we have this other input parameter, right, which is called bending. In this case, we could also assign a boolean to this input parameter in case that you would like to define the hinges, uh, rotational hinges at least at both ends. But the thing is that if you use this input parameter, it would be a perfect hinge. We could not assign um, this very uh, low stiffness value. So for that reason, I usually define my hinges always with this beam joints component instead of using this input parameter here. Okay, so that should be everything now regarding our Karama model. And we are ready finally to start with our analysis.